What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. In today's video I will show you in details one of the most exciting sets of the year from the LEGO Adults theme. This is the 10283 Space Shuttle Discovery. Yes, I mentioned LEGO for adults and not 18 plus or creator expert. Apparently this will be the new name of this theme. It does not appear yet on lego.com, but you can expect it soon. So, to make this review even more interesting, I will have a guest here. The folks at LEGO made this amazing opportunity happen, and I had a chance to talk to Mila Maj, who designed the LEGO version of the Space Shuttle Discovery. I will include some of the most interesting parts of the interview in this video, and you can read the full version by clicking on the link in the top right corner or in the description. Here is the box of the set. I won't talk much about it since I already did that in my first video with all the basics and even more. I suggest to watch that one first if you missed it and then come back to this one. Links are available at the usual places. So we find some bags and another white cardboard box if we open this one. Altogether there are 18 numbered bags, an unnumbered one and a manual with the sticker sheet and other accessories. The sheets are quite interesting, there's a classic sticker sheet mainly for the plaques on the stands and the smaller ones identified in the discovery, then there's the shiny metallic sheet for the cargo bay door cover and finally the plastic sheet for the Hubble solar array. The manual is pretty minimalistic, I could imagine a more attractive photo on the front. We get some information at the beginning about the space shuttle and the STS-31 mission itself with the deployment of the Hubble Space Telescope. A few thoughts from Milan and interestingly a short paragraph about the future of NASA space missions without the space shuttles. Here are the building phases and surprisingly we get two additional pages afterwards about the Hubble Space Telescope. Unfortunately the manual still uses the black background. As LEGO promised to stop this in future releases, I'm looking forward to see the first LEGO for adults set with a different design. Time to start building. The process begins with the stand for the Hubble, and if you like very different LEGO pieces seamlessly connected at wacky angles, then you will already love this build. The bottom of the stand gets covered with some nice knot curves, and we can already start the Hubble. The core of the space telescope is very colorful, and it has studs in every possible direction. I usually don't understand when people complain about the colorful interior of a build, saying that it is visually distracting or even too childish. Well, I would suggest to try building one something that has fully black or grey interior and see how happy you will be with that. Anyway, time to add the outer shell. The telescope has a very reflective surface, so the designer had the opportunity to cover it with tons of drum lacquered metallic silver elements. Unfortunately, the finish of the surface is far from being smooth. If we take a closer look, there are a lot of smaller imperfections and scratches. I'm not sure if it is supposed to look like that, but there seems to be identical diagonal scratches on most of them, so it might be related to the manufacturing process. I'm sure the real telescope is not that shiny and perfect either, as space is a rough place, but it still does not seem to be added on purpose. Especially if we check this printed piece, the surface on this lacks the scratches. Now this is how the Hubble looks at the end of back 2. The last step is to add this transparent dish that might symbolize the secondary mirror assembly, I guess, although that one is much smaller. Here is the aperture door and a lot more metallic silver pieces. Apparently the coating works better on flat surfaces, but there are still some differences here as well. We add more details with this section that connects with clips to the main assembly. Apparently the yellow pattern also has significance since it is not symmetrical on this side. The body of the Hubble is almost finished. There is this one specific section to add. As you might know, the Hubble had optical problems and they were fixed during the STS-61 mission by replacing multiple components. I'm not sure if this is the high-speed photometer that was originally there or the COSTAR unit that replaced it. Anyway, it will also have another purpose, which you will see once the shuttle is completed. As a final step for the space telescope, we build these solar panels using some totally out-of-place elements, like these lenses, candles and flowers. Once attached, we can put the Hubble on its stand and we can move to the main build. With bag 4, we build a stand first for the discovery, using some nice knot techniques and some unusual and pretty colorful pieces that will surely disappear under others. The structure is reinforced with technic elements like these steering racks here, then some more technic beams added to the bottom and we cover all the sides and everything with black elements. With bag 5, we start to build the base of the shuttle. The landing gears are added pretty soon, then the structure comes to control them. Interestingly, these two sections are not symmetrical, although their purpose and the connection points are the same. You can see a similar difference with the second section as well. I only can assume that the reason is to color code the two sides with the grey and red axles to help the building process. 
There are quite a few large plates used to form the base in back 6. As you see the olive green is a color that pops up in a lot of places. Let's see what Milan says about that. Yeah, um, I mean, with this model, the the olive green is funny. I've seen a lot of people guessing and speculating online, like, what does it mean? Is it his favorite color? Is it, are they trying to use pieces left over from whatever model? Um, in, uh, in this case, it was just a choice because normally on the inside of a model, we, we put lots of, um, not necessarily lots of colors, but we try and make it easy enough to find the bricks when you're building it right if the whole shutter was made out of white pieces which it almost is it would be a nightmare to build um and the olive green was chosen simply because on the real shuttle all of the um structure inside the shuttle is olive green here comes one of the easter eggs the red heart i asked milan if there were any other easter eggs included i mean the olive green i think is probably the the big one um which only a few people have figured out um, but there's also some weird stuff inside, like uh, there's a, a, a classic space slope printed in, inside the model because we had it available and we thought um, it's a space set, so it probably should have it. It's the one with the kind of uh, the grills on it uh, that's in all the old uh, 80s space stuff. Um, and there's also the point in which you connect the, um, the stand to the base of the shuttle. Um, Inside has this kind of interesting tile arrangement, which is uh, we swap the colors to make it look like the uh, the symbol for uh, center of mass. So so it's, um, yeah, a little bit of a, a engineering nod. Yeah. This will become the leading edge of the wing with the black at the front and the beginning of the dark bluish gray section symbolizing the reinforced carbon part. This yellow hinge seems to be weird for the first sight as it cannot move, but it will make sense soon. The attachment of the edge to the main structure is pure genius. You can see how the functional hinge and the plate with the hole holds it in place, but there's also that small section of the other built-in hinge and also the small wing piece that sits on the other plates and they are also held in place by other pieces from top. An amazing usage of pieces that have a completely different original function. Another creative solution if there's no studied 2x2 triangle piece available to fill that empty section Let's use an upside down tile instead with a funky structure that holds it in place. The rest of the reinforced carbon fiber edge is added as well with a similarly creative support structure. There's one fixed attachment point and the rest sits on the lower plates and also secured in place with the huge upper blue triangular plate. The last items to add from Bag 7 are the tips of the wings. The main build of Bag 8 is the mechanism that will deploy the landing gear. I'm not really sure about the asymmetric pattern on it as I did not see anything similar on the photos of the real shuttle. If you know what it represents, please let me know in the comments. The front landing gear is added, it also has a shock absorber helping the deployment. What is really interesting is how Milan replicated one of the unusual properties of the space shuttle. Once the landing gear is deployed, it cannot be retracted with the same mechanism, and here you can see that this is the case with the LEGO version as well, at least it is already visible at the front. Bag 9 can be completed very quickly with a few white pieces, tiles and plates, almost the entire wing gets covered and the colorful guts will disappear. The rear landing gear is now also connected to the deployment mechanism, and after we add these clever stoppers it is fully functional, and it works the same way for all wheels. They can be deployed but had to be retracted manually. It's a fantastic mechanism using the least amount of space possible, no surprise that this was the biggest challenge to design according to Milan. Yeah. And uh, I, I keep keep going back to the landing gear. It was just, <laughs> boy, <laughs> that was tough. Because the, um, I mean, getting landing gear to, to fire is, is not a huge challenge in itself. But the issue with the shuttle was that we had this super heavy um, nose section. There's just like this dense stack of bricks. And then the engines and the tail and the wings are also like a super heavy stack of bricks. And then everything in between has to be totally hollow uh to, to fit the telescope in so we had a problem with uh getting it structural so that it was super strong in the middle so that it would support itself um but also uh you know how do you how do you get the front and the rear landing gear to be coupled to be triggered at the same time without taking up any room in the middle of the model <laughs> um so we had so many different versions of trying like uh you know, should the landing gear come down on worm gears or should there be a, a lever that 
and in the end we we settled for just um for putting springs and, and just having this button on the back that fires everything at once because it allowed us to keep the inside of the payload bay as empty as possible mm-hmm. and we wanted to get the hubble to be accurate to the correct scale as well so it was important for us that we still had that that full room inside the bay here's a very clever complex assembly that could have been easily a stickered panel otherwise but it looks so much better when brick built here's another bigger section full of snot building it is quite a challenge to guess the purpose of all the connections but once we put it in place we suddenly start to respect the ingenuity of the designer the whole assembly is designed to be angled like this and the central nozzle is still able to control the elevons after covering the landing gear with these big wedges, we are finished with back 10. We get some nice printed bricks with the flag printed in the appropriate direction according to the regulations. The rear section above the shock absorbers gets covered. There are two 1x1 bricks with the usual pinhole, but we get some new ones with the cross axle hole. This design was introduced this year. Yet another interesting combination of parts that will help keeping the angled rear section in the correct position, but it is not the only one. This next assembly will serve as the base of the vertical stabilizer, but also secures the mentioned rear totally with the clips. This piece will serve as the base of the RMS, the remote manipulator system. This printed 1x1 tile is not exclusive to this set, it already appeared elsewhere as well. I'm not totally sure what does it represent here, any space shuttle experts who could help me? These 2x2 run tiles should represent the airlock door in the cargo bay, and I think I found a little cheating in the design. I will show you in a minute. 28 1x1 rounded pieces to be aligned here, not the most exciting part of the build. This is the mid deck with this cool tiny blue seat for the fifth crew member and some instruments and this piece represents the airlock that really opens from the mid deck. Now here's the cheating part. If we check the airlock from the payload bay, it is actually much lower. From this perspective, this is the correct position if we check the reference photos. I guess the limitations of the brick and the structure did not allow to put the mid-deck low enough to align it to the position of the airlock in the payload bay, so this little trick is totally forgivable. Lots of tiny elements can be found in back 13. These gold printed instruments will actually belong to the flight deck, I think. This is the KU band antenna used for the communications with Earth, and this is the arm of the remote manipulator system. A few tiny cameras to be added, using minifigure jump stands. Here is the brand new piece for the payload bay doors and a few reflective stickers to be applied on the inside. I have to admit, this is by far the worst part of the build for me. Applying the stickers to the concave surfaces is an absolute nightmare. I always try my best to align the stickers and apply them without bubbles, but this is impossible here. If you want to remove a corner to release the air, then the reflective surface will show it for sure and every little bubble is perfectly visible. You kind of figure out towards the end how to do it, but until then you mess up half of the stickers and there's no second chance with these. At least the attachment of the cargo bay doors is pretty cool, and at this point there are still four sections, just like on the real thing, but they will soon be coupled. Let's see what's the reason for this. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to, um, to what I was saying about it. Was that it was so, so difficult to get the middle of the model to be totally hollow. And how you know it, it's, there's just air there. There's there's no supporting structure. So, in order to um, to make sure that when you picked it up and moved it around the room, you didn't crush the middle of the model, uh, we needed to uh, make some decisions in order to strengthen that area, uh, so that you can you can pick it up and move it uh, without having to spend an entire day rebuilding everything that you've just dropped. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Bag 14 begins with this colorful assembly that will become the core of the nose section. The assembly goes pretty quickly, with most of the things being built sideways. I was wondering what is the reason for those clips seemingly doing nothing in there, but here I realized that they will hold the center of the nose section with the elements of the forward reaction control system. I was not sure about the purpose of this weird structure first, but after covering it with the white plates it quickly became one of the elevons, and the second one is added as well. If you are looking for the new 1x1 bricks with the axle hole, then this set will provide a lot, here's 5 of them in a row. But interestingly it did not get the brand new 1x5 plates, the old rounded Technic plate is used instead like before. And here is the reason why, that axle hole is used to attach the rudder elements that also act like a speed brake. The vertical stabilizer is in place, and this is the end of back 15. 
The orbital maneuvering system and reaction control system pods are quite complex, and the LEGO build is pretty tricky as well. There are a lot of small details to add like the thrusters, but at the end everything fits perfectly. Here is the last bag, and we build a fly deck. There are four tiny seats with the proper arrangement and a lot of instruments. Then comes the front and the overhead windows and we can put the fly deck in place. By the way, the crew cabin and the mid deck is Milan's favorite detail on the set. The last items to build are the stand for the Hubble and the rolled up solar panels and we are finished. So here are all of the items we built, just look at all the cool details. As you see, we get a lot of display possibilities. We can use the stands for both the Discovery and the Hubble to display them side by side. Each of them has its own plaque with all the interesting information. Now here's another option, we can use the second smaller stand for the Hubble to put it on display in the cargo bay. We need to change the solar panels to the rolled up ones first, then insert the stand. We need to remove the last piece from the space telescope that covers the connection points for the stand to attach it. The payload arm can be connected to one of the small claw pieces on top that were stored in the stand previously. As you see the arm cannot hold any weight, but the setup looks very cool. I'm not sure if a transparent support could have been better than the black one, but from a right angle it can represent the blackness of space, so I think it is fine. The Hubble can be also stored in the cargo bay, but for that we need to remove these solar panels completely unfortunately. As you can read it in the full interview, this sacrifice was necessary to make the cargo bay section structurally stronger with these additional ribs inside. If you know you will be careful with the model, you can actually change these pieces and then the Hubble will fit with the solar panels as well. So what about the details and functions? Apart from the many details visible outside, we have an easy access to the flight deck and the mid deck as well. The elevons are controlled by the top engine nozzle. I know, based on the range of motion these are technically ailerons and not elevons, but let's respect the fact that the designer managed to squeeze this here with such limited space available. The rudder can be adjusted manually, and it can be split in two to act like a speed brake, just like on the real shuttle. And finally, the coolest trick that you could see during the assembly, the landing gear deployment. The body flap is used for this, by the way the flap can be also adjusted. The mechanism works flawlessly, and you can easily push the wheels back in place manually. So, let's sum it up. As I mentioned in the very beginning, this is definitely one of the most exciting sets for me this year. It looks fantastic, has plenty of details, the building process is enjoyable with lots of clever solutions, there are multiple display options, working functions, a must have for space and LEGO fans. Can't really mention much on the downside, maybe the pain of applying the reflective stickers on the concave surfaces, and the uneven finish on the drum lacquered pieces. But all these are really minor flaws compared to the whole experience, so I would definitely suggest this set to everyone. I've seen some comments about the scale, why it does not match the Saturn V, as at that scale the set could have included the fuel tank and the boosters as well. It's a compromise of scale versus details, but let's see what Milan says about this. Yeah, it's a, it's a compromise, but it was a, a decision that we, we took to say, you know, we, we, we always make them, uh, like the, the last few with the, the shuttle adventure and expedition, we always make them that kind of size and, and um, we, if we were to add something new, what's the reason for doing a new space shuttle other than celebrating the 40th anniversary? And the reason is that now we can add in all those extra details because the Saturn V, I think, really elevated the level of accuracy that we uh, should be able to achieve in a, a LEGO space set. Like that, that thing is amazing. So the goal was to not make something that could just sit alongside it as as in scale but to sit alongside it in terms of um the the level of detail and 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 the storytelling and uh for a shuttle to in order to get that detail you have to go big so make sure to read the full interview on my webpage and please let me know your thoughts in the comments if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my lego reviews and other lego rc videos see you next time Bye bye